it's hella black. Black out of the game, like we in a real life, you feel me? Here rocking. With that hard shit, that black shit. That blacky black shit, you feel me? Not that sellout black shit, but that real black shit, that black in the field shit. This is definitely this this is definitely that authentic black shit, not that watered down label of black shit. Yeah, not that PhD in the streets black shit. But Maybe that we, should, authentic we might black be, shit. we might need to shift to that kind of black shit because those are the black podcasts that get all the props and all the shit. Yeah. Remember I sent you that screenshot of when um I think it was like the Apple podcast, whatever, that little app. They had for Black History Month. They had the fucking um, like the top top black, black podcast. podcast for this, and it was like nigga, we clearly got more plays than most of these podcasts. Most of these podcasts, like we had more engagement, but it was because like when you look at the who they were and the kind of shit they talked about, it was clear to see like oh, this is the shit that make white people feel good, which is why we might just have to register as some Democrats to get our plays up, bro. You know, I need to be having like <laughs> Finsters or whatever. We need to get a fake podcast. You said a fake podcast. Fake podcast. Fake podcast. Just... Yeah, we just be see the power of the black vote. If we just organize this black Each community black, around voting. Black capitalism, black democracy. Black rush car. Black policing. Oh, man. We would get a bag. We would get a bag and some plays. And we would get black a Netflix history special, life. for sure. Oh, facts. We would get Netflix special. We would be featured on all the top uh, media outlets, news stations, for sure. We just got to stop going by like our first names. We'd be like Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blake or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But nah, we gonna like, keep we gonna keep we gonna keep kicking that real shit. You know, we have no choice. Shit. I can't, bro. Like, if we I can't sh- even it, like even when we play with this shit. Like, we know we, we do like the the fake voices and shit. Yeah. The uh, what do they call that shit? Fuck, what is it? Parody shit. But yeah. when we do it, it even feel wrong when I'm playing. Like, I feel sick even just yeah. saying what I'm saying. Like, my stomach is kicking right now, bro. I so it's like it's it. it's no point. We can just this this radical black shit, this revolutionary black shit is the shit that feels the most. It, it we have no choice. To me, you, know? you know, I remember we was talking about it where, like, you said something like, bro, we didn't really choose this. You feel me? We was kind of born into it, bro. And, like, really thinking about that, I was kind of reflecting. I'm like, yeah, we, we really didn't choose this shit. Like, this shit kind of just aligned itself, and we had no choice. Yeah, I think with most black radi- radical folks, right, like, it's just something that you're born into or you grow into. And then once you, you know, you turn that light on, and when you get to turn it off, yeah. like, once you become conscious and aware of what's going on around you and how the, sy- how the system works, like what's awesome. talking for you? Yeah, I don't know if y'all heard that horn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, shit, you know, we, we making it rocking. If you're watching right now, subscribe <laughs> on YouTube. You feel me? Oh, my God. YouTube.com slash I don't know what it is, but search Hell Black Pod. We on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. You feel me? You can watch us as we talk. You can turn it on your TV, you know, YouTube play or whatever. You feel me? So tap in with our YouTube. Mandatory. Tap in with our SoundCloud, iTunes. Give us a five-star review. You feel me? It's like we really trying to be organic. You know what I'm saying? It's you had all these podcasts during Black History Month, like these black podcasts, quote unquote, centered on Apple, you know, podcasts. But nigga, if we have like thousands of reviews on our shit, it's like you have no choice but to like also try and center our shit because we get hella plays. You feel me? So I think yeah. that organic support really is what has built Hell Black and we really need your support, you feel me? Whether it's posting on your IG story, telling your partners, like that's really how Hell Black is spread. I appreciate everybody who's already posted, you feel me? Yeah, I think, I don't know, when, so we went to, you know, so I'm thinking about, like, the podcast and remaining authentic and, like, our formatting and us, like, even recording and West Oakland and filming your apartment and shit and not having, I, I feel like at this point, we probably, like, we could definitely get some access to, to bigger studios and whatnot, but I'm thinking about, like, really keeping this shit as authentic and as, like, just... The roots of hell black. You feel honestly. me? Like the way we can keep it the way we were, and if like if that can continue, like the authentic and the, you know, the not so much highly produced, you know what I'm saying, or like backed by the biggest companies and shit. If we can keep it like that, I would be, I'll be super proud and happy what we're doing, bro. Because I feel like shit don't really get um, corrupted. Yeah, I feel like shit don't really always get the recognition that it does it deserves if it isn't packaged in a way that white folks deem appropriate. Yeah. Like if you look at that's what I'm saying. Like if you look at the podcasts that were featured on that Black History Month shit, it was the ones that are are in big studios. They're, they're highly produced. They're not the way that we do our shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I think ours is. I think you can learn probably more from our shit, especially on terms of like Black radicalness. You can learn more from our shit. Um, ours is more equitable, whatever, more diverse. It's all the it's things. Accessible it's all the things that these folks try to be. Yeah. But it's just not as. It's like it's not as much money behind it, but I don't give a fuck. As long as the people keep supporting us and motherfuckers is listening to this shit, 
That's and all they learn, that's all that fucking matter. I don't give a fuck if we ever get featured on any of these big things. As long as we can continue to produce this political education, accessible political education, this real equitable political education, the real diverse and inclusive political education, I'm with it. I don't give a fuck if our shit is ever featured on any type of big blog or podcast or whatever. And plus, the streets fuck with us. Yeah. That's all I care about. That's that's all I really matter. <laughs> that's all I care about. I'm like, when random ass niggas come up to me like, hey, bro, I listen to Hella Black, that's all the validation I really need. You know? Just like, right, you feel me? It's just like, people you wouldn't assume listen to it, like, oh, I'll be fucking with your shit. It's yeah. like, damn, that should be... Only, only thing is, right, like, we're for sure not making as much money as those big podcasts. Oh, hell no. And, <laughs> you know, I, I do want to get paid for this labor. So, yeah. to the white folks that listen to our shit, pay for this. Patreon.com, so I pay shall black pod, pay up, you feel me? Help us make as much money as the white folks and the other, you know. <laughs> help us make <laughs> So this is why you need to watch on YouTube because if you've seen this nigga's expression, you're just like, mm. I'm just, uh, oh, so I'm like <laughs> help. I want to make as much money as the black liberals make, but I still want my shit to be radical. It's just, yeah. And I mean, and yeah, I, I can do that with the help of white folks. Paying and if we're talking about a bigger platform and shit, you feel me? And like, we really want to spread these revolutionary politics, bro. You need the bigger the platform, you need more resources too to spread your shit out. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like we have no marketing budget. We ain't paying for no ads. This shit is just pure organic off Twitter, Instagram. Word of mouth, streets, you feel me? So, so yeah, because you got to think about it. The bullshit is being pumped to the mass media over like, the, the bullshit, the racist shit. The multi-billion dollar bullshit, right? Like, that's you know, the That's All the shit that machine, upholds... CNN, yeah. Fox News, right? All the logic that upholds the patriarchy, the capitalist society, this white supremacist society, all that gets pumped into mass media. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, that shit is everywhere. Excuse me. The real shit, the shit that's revolutionary, is not. This is the shit that's only getting passed around, like word of mouth type shit. So, if y'all want us to have a bigger platform and for us to kick the real shit to the masses, we need the support of the people. Thanks. Yeah, hundred percent. So I appreciate everybody for fucking with us. Make sure you tap in with our Patreon, and you're not only just supporting us on Patreon, but you're also getting extended episodes, right? So every single episode we've had since I don't know for a long time now, we have extended episodes. So you're gonna get extended content. You know, you have. Hundreds, you know, hundreds of minutes of extended content that is unreleased to, you know, our regular SoundCloud, right? Or our podcast app on iTunes, you feel me? So make sure you tap them on our Patreon.com slash HellBlackPod. And if you white, pay up. And if you white and you don't got it, pay a dollar. I know you can figure out a dollar. Facts, right? You yeah, mind? That shit all right up. That shit all right <laughs> So, yeah. We got a good episode in store, man. We fresh. We fresh back from UC Santa Barbara. We had a live show out there. Shout out to the BSU, the black students there at UC Santa Barbara yeah, yeah. for fucking with us. We had a they dope had live show. Sure. Yeah, that shit was raw as shit. That shit was cool, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> reflected on it. I don't even think I really fully reflected on it. You know, we're both so busy. But I'm like, damn, that was pretty monumental for us, especially, you know, thinking about you. And you went to Santa Barbara City College and shit. Like, so what was that like for you, man, going back to a place you went to college at? And, being able to be on something different than sports, you feel me, be on some well, politics, bro. It, it was wild. Just, like, the experience, overall experience in general, I was thinking about something. Um, I was thinking, I, I, was, I was reflecting yesterday. You know, we had the fundraiser that I had been planning for, like, hella long, right? That was finally over, and we will. Really Congrats, bro. And, and I was just thinking about my life in general, and, I, and moving to Santa Barbara was a pivotal point in my life. I think that was 20, 2011. I had just quit the Humboldt State football team. And like packed all my shit up and got on Greyhound and rolled down to fucking Santa Barbara to stay with you know my girlfriend at the time and one of my closest friends. And bro, I'm telling you, like that first semester, I think I had like a 1.2 GPA. Made the football team went 0 and 10. I fucking only played like three games. Bro, it was like the lowest moment of my life. So now I think about going back to Santa Barbara, like and how much my life has changed. And fuck, what year is it? 2019. <laughs> Bro, that was eight years ago, nigga. Oh my fucking god, what? Damn. That's Why did it feel like it was like four years? Ago? I don't know. Like, Bro, yeah. That's so that was eight years ago, nigga. That's hell. Oh my god, nigga. Like my mind is literally blown. Right now. <laughs> eight years ago. So I'm thinking about how much my life has shifted in eight years, bro. Yeah. And I still feel dumb young. That's why I'm like, you feel me? I was 18 when that happened. 18, 19. Yeah, I still feel. I still feel super young. So. Hey, it, it was wild, bro, to, to think about, okay, there was, I once was in living in this, in this little city town, whatever you want to call it, you know, going to the junior college out here, dumbass broke, living in a one bedroom with five people, you know what I'm saying, uh, living in this white ass town, 
the only black people I know is on the fo- in my house on the football team. And just to go back there now um, to this bougie ass university, who at the time, like I said, I was a city college student, so like niggas, nobody fucked with city college students, especially you feel me, you a black student athlete on a football team that hasn't won any games in like ten years, type of shit. Like no one takes you serious. I'm on top of that, um, you know, you just had a junior college that kind of elitist attitude, attitude that comes yeah. with that shit. So. Um, you know, the gist of it is like going back into this space, knowing that like here I am teaching. Yeah, literally teaching. <laughs> like essentially, that's what we're doing when we educate folks. You're teaching or something, right? So here I here I am at this university that. You know, students that were there made me feel like I was less than because I was attending a junior college or whatever. So like here I am, at this motherfucker, teaching black students and like, they see value in my ideas and my voice and my thoughts. It was, it was like a surreal moment. I guess like. Shit coming full circle, kind of. Yeah. Cause yeah, like that. It's, place, all, it's yeah. also about all the work you done put into, like thinking about all the growth you've been in since eight years, you first right? came there. Yeah. Eight years and eight eight years later, you feel me? You back and you educating black students. You know what I'm saying? And you talking about your experience and yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? And like, imagine if you had I don't know an experience like that when you was 18. You know what I'm saying? Getting like, you know, not to put ourselves on like a high horse or anything, but like yeah. had like a a radical education or being exposed to that shit. Yeah. You know? And it's just... Mm, I don't know. It's wild to... I don't know if you ever had the experience like of somewhere that's brought you like most... Trauma. most Yeah, like mostly a lot of fucked up times to like go back there in a different point of your life. And it was just... It was, it was, a, it was, it was a weird experience for me. But the actual live podcast, like being in a room in that space, it, it was... Super dope, bro. Like, yeah. yeah, so make sure y'all tap into that episode. It's the last episode we just dropped, so you can hear exactly what we're talking about. It was definitely a dope space, and we have even 30 more minutes of exclusive content from that episode on our Patreon. So if you was fucking with that episode and you want to get 30 minutes more of that episode, make sure you tap in with our Patreon.com slash Hello Black Pie. Yeah, and make sure, you know, we, we talked about this. We are trying to do more live podcasts, so if you are someone who thinks you have some type of space that we can come to and do a live podcast, that'd be dope. And if you like, if you listen to the live podcast or watch the live podcast, you'll, you'll see the, uh, the space that we, that we cultivate is super dope. Yeah, yeah. It's raw. It's inclusive. It's fun. Like it's politics, but it's also, I feel like a good time, you know, and that's, that's like, that's really the space we're trying to build, you know? So we've had a lot of shows in Oakland, over a hundred people, LA, over a hundred people, we had like over 80 people at Santa Barbara, you feel me? So it's like, we were really trying to spread these politics and make sure you tap in with us if you want us to come to Mount Geo City and do a live show. Any schools you want us to come to, like tap in, we'll try to make shit work, you feel me? So tap in with us, DM us at Hello Black Pod, or just reach out to us. We, we know how to find us. The live shows, they be mad stressful, but they be fun. Yeah. I had hell of anxiety before I ain't even gonna lie, bro. I had to do, I had to open my Headspace app. And do like a presentation, uh, a meditation or some shit. And just like, that just comes with it though, bro. Like that comes with. It. I, I was talking to someone. And they said like you don't outgrow the fear of public speaking. I'm like, I think it's just better. You yeah. better. You get better at managing that fear. I don't know if you necessarily outgrow it. I don't think so. Cause I really like like I tell my students it's like, and I feel like they look at me hella surprised. I'm like, yo, my freshman year, I was that nigga in the back of the class with my hood on and my headphones in, cause I had anxiety about speaking. Like I really used to have like damn near panic attacks raising my hand because I literally thought my voice didn't matter, bro. And I'm in a room full of, like, white people yeah. at UC Berkeley. You know, if there's so many factors that play shit. into this shit. Yeah, so so it's like, even though my voice matters now, it's like, I'm still like, damn, like, I have anxiety. Like, niggas done spoke in front of, like, 500 people before. But, like, yeah, I still get that same anxiety and it's a trip. But, yeah, I, I get it. It's just performance anxiety at the, yeah. at the root of it, right? Like, you gotta go up there and you gotta essentially perform. You know? I still deal with it at times but I just learned I've learned to ignore it honestly like I'm nervous before any I still sometimes get a little anxious before the podcast you know what I'm yeah. saying like, no, like, I feel it I just ignore this shit <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it like, I, I have different coping mechanisms sometimes yeah. I just pop, pump myself up a little much and just really, like I gotta like I guess give myself mantras like you matter you value you yeah. type of shit like, that positive like, self talk you know, yeah. but I think it's important that we like talk about this too you know like for people to know that you can have anxiety and still do great things. Yeah, don't think that we just you know getting up saying? there doing the talking and like that we're not afraid. Yeah. Nah, fuck that. Like, we still have anxieties. We still deal with this shit too. You feel me? So I think it's important. Sure. And we still successful. 
So if you have anxiety, you listen to this, man, like, you ain't alone. You feel me? So we just for sure want people to know that. My heart sure. is racing as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm right there with you. <sighs> Shit. So some black joy, bro. I don't know. You trying to talk about black joy right now? I feel like we, we almost yeah. skipped over it. I had black joy last night, actually. What was your black joy moment? So shit, me, me, you, and Kelly, we met up right and went to go have like some wings and watch basketball for a little bit. Yeah. And all of us, both, all three of us, were like super tapped out, right? So on, I'm riding home, and I'm like, "Fuck, I want to do what my grandma was doing." So I just changed my lift to drive me off to her house, and I walk in, and like my aunt, my aunt is pulling up. My older, my older cousin comes to open the door. My other cousin is pulling up. My other grandma was pulling up, and it just got hella lit out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just sitting on the couch watching, um, like, the Richard Pryor documentary with a bunch of my cousins, two of my grandmothers, you know, excuse me, my aunt. And it was just, I don't know, it's just something about them spaces, bro, when I'm around my family. Like, it's just, it's, I have zero anxiety. It's fucking wild, bro. And it's like, I don't know, I think that's the feeling that I chase a lot. And that's why I'm so big on, like, if, if you realize my family has hella fucking parties, bro. Yeah. Like hella gets you. If you realize me, I like having hella people at my when the I like having celebrations at my house type shit. Like I like yeah. cultivating safe spaces where my friends and family come together. We can just keep drinking, have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Like I that's my favorite pastime is getting with friends and family and fucking congregating, bro. So oh uh, yeah, like yesterday being at my granny's house, we watching Richard Pryor shit, we eating peanut brittle fucking salami and crackers <laughs> um, I'm drinking a little bit of Hennessy with my auntie it was just it was so dope and then of course um, you know my cousin Jayla is pregnant and her son is there and then my other cousin you know Sonny just had a baby too yeah. so it's just like the next generation is in there you know what I'm saying it was just it's like you have multiple generations bro it's fire bro it's a random Friday like, and I had just left y'all niggas yeah. you know what I'm saying so it's just like getting to be around so many different people that I love in a, in a over like a two three hour time span was something that I, I hella valued and it, I, had, I had a really good Friday night to be honest and I didn't really do shit just spend time with people and even after this we finna go barbecue and drink yeah. like, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hella excited about that bro. Yeah. I'm just hoping to, to be around people that fill you up is, it's, just a, it's a privilege and a blessing bro, I'm happy for you bro that shit like those meaningful relationships you know what I'm saying and it's like especially in the society you know what I'm saying yeah. like to be able to get together with your family and friends and just like especially in this time right now in Oakland especially mm-hmm. like with all this shit going on and yeah man that's beautiful what about you shit I don't even know man I'm, I'm finna take this trip bro I think I might have a I'm gonna do a future Black Joy moment you know yeah. so my birthday coming up you know Aries season you know Aries in full full effect coming up are y'all the only niggas that do that kind of shit like <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you said it with so much just like enthusiasm, like, oh, this is an actual thing. Like, Aries say this shit. Yeah, apparently it's a very Aries thing to say. I don't know. Aries Someone's like, oh, yeah, like, you can show what? Aries, nigga, for real. I, people be saying that shit, though, about other, other signs and shit. I ain't never heard anybody say it's cancer season. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, I've never said those words. Like, oh, it's cancer season. Like, I've never said that. And I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. Uh, shit, well, you know. Aries, so, Aries, 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 that. Aries be the first zodiac sign for those of you who are in a, into astrology, so. How? Like, like, it's, it's the first one. I don't know. It's just the first one. In the that sound like, right. Bro, I ain't even Oh, because alphabetical order? I don't even know. Must be because of that. But it's the first sign, so all you astrologers, you know where I'm coming from, you know. <laughs> so all y'all other signs wouldn't exist without Aries is what I'm trying to say, basically. But, you know, my birthday. Some nut <laughs> shit. <laughs> Some nut shit, bro. What? No uh, shit. So, yeah, you know, my birthday coming up, and, uh, Getting to be able to travel, I haven't really taken time off for my birthday or like time off during, you know, for those of you who know me, I work in education. I ain't ever taken like a vacation during the school year. <clears throat> it's always been after, you know, summer or some shit like that. You know, so to be able to take like some time off, like vacation, you feel me? Like real vacation, bro, I'm, I'm very juiced to yeah. just get away, you know, be, be out of here, you feel me? You know, be on an island, you know. And I ain't talking about Alameda, you know, so just getting out. Yeah. Getting out and just uh, seeing a different part of the world, bro, you know. It's going to be fire. You know, I ain't never been out, I haven't been out the country yet. I might this summer for my birthday, but 
I've seen the pictures already about to be at. That shit's about to be so fun, bro. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And hopefully you come back like super recharged. Bro, that's what I need to is just, I feel like feeling recharged. You know, just thinking about all this politics, you know, we've done so much work. And for me to be able to get out and just take a, a break for a couple of weeks, you know, I'm, I'm very used to be able to do that. Very privileged to be able to do that for sure, you know. But I think it's important to still like have those moments of vacation, those moments of relaxation, despite everything that's can, going on. If you can, yeah. you know. So I'm very juiced. I'm juiced for that. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when we get back. I know you're gonna have a bunch of stories. Bro. Yeah, I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have some good stories, man. Sure, sure, <laughs> <you're late. laughs> but so what else are we gonna talk about, today, man? Um. Yeah, like, I feel like it's only right to acknowledge uh, the shooting that happened in, was it New Zealand? Yeah, Christchurch, New Zealand. Yeah, and it's, it's, I didn't know about it until you said something. Did it happen yesterday? Yeah, I think it happened yesterday. I don't know, my time is kind of fucked up, but I'm pretty sure it did happen yesterday. Yeah, I just haven't been on Twitter. Like, I've, I've, I've tweeted, like, maybe, like, seven times over the course of, like, the last few weeks, and it was because... That shit. So re- I think it was two episodes ago. Me, you, and AB were on here. Yeah. And they were telling, like, and we were all, we were all talking about like, you know, cultivating our days in a way that fucking does right by us. And I started realizing how much Twitter was like angering me, rightfully so, right? Because I'm seeing hello, I'm seeing the patriarchy, white supremacy, capitalism. I'm seeing that shit all day. That's all I'm engaged in, and it's really just taking a toll on my mental. So this is why I have I didn't even know the mosque shooting had happened until we met yesterday at like six o'clock. Man, I was like, well, what? Um, yeah. So definitely, I, and I I don't man I don't I don't want to be like sending my condolences. I just want to acknowledge. I don't, and yeah. It's such a I don't like you like send love to people. I don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. I definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think it's about. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's like. This shit is so fucked up. Like send, sending my condolences. Sending send my condolences. What are my condolences going? Yeah. You know, it's like I want to send shit. my love. I want to yeah. send my solidarity. That's for sure. But also, like people, like I don't know. You feel me? It's like this shit is so sickening to me, bro. Like I remember just I was just sitting on my couch watching a video from one of, um, I think one of the survivors, and bro, I just like started crying. And usually I'm kind of tapped out of that. Like I'm so used to seeing all this traumatic shit. I'm I have shit that does that to me though every, every now and again. Yeah, I see something that just like hurts me a lot. Yeah, and that shit but, just like, hurt me, bro. I think it comes. And it was a black yeah. Muslim woman talking too, so mm-hmm. it was just like, you know, a double layer of that, right? It's just you reach that point where it's just like, fuck, like this shit ain't never gonna fucking end, because you really get the. And then it's just it's such a layered thing. You think about it, like these folks were at church, right? And in the mosque, and, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like a, a religious, are supposed to be a, like a, a religious safe haven. I mean, it's supposed to be a, a safe place for these people, a safe space. And, you know, essentially, like, a white supremacist terrorist goes in there and acts white supremacist violence. Um, and we've seen that happen over here a, a million times with, 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 you know... Like Dylan Roof. Yeah, like black women just say, say spots, right? Yeah. It's like this shit and happens. He, he was, like, in his manifesto, he mentioned Dylan Roof as somebody who inspired him. Right? So when we talk about, like, white supremacy as a global project, right? Mm-hmm. This is what we mean, Right? The things that are happening here in the United States, Donald Trump is also influencing far right movements globally. Right. White supremacy is a global white supremacy is a global movement, bro. And this is global ideology and there's global (laughs) implications. And this is why you hear so many revolution revolutionaries and like radicals talk about the importance of like global solidarity. You feel what I'm saying? Because for a revolution to happen, we can't like in order for white supremacy to cease to exist, it has to be eradicated everywhere. We have to remove it from everywhere bro mm-hmm. like we can't just have a revolution over here and forget about everywhere else right white supremacy doesn't only exist in the united states, in the united states you know what sometimes we have a very american outlook of white supremacy like mm-hmm. oh we need to be free here in america it's like well we global globally we have to address white supremacy because of imperialism globally, like, we have to address that, yeah. colonial empires right so it's like you have these white people these white supremacists on campus, right, throwing up, you know, the little, this little three sign, whatever the hell they be doing. You have people in Trump's office throwing up that sign. Mm-hmm. And he's over here, the, the, the terrorist who shot and killed everyone in um, Christchurch. He's over there, like, for his arraignment hearing, throwing up the same sign. 
right, that, you know, these white students in, you know, Charlottesville is doing, these white students at Berkeley are doing, right? So it's like, this is terrorism, right? This is terrorism, even though a lot of folks won't call it terrorism, you know? I mean, just because the way we've been propagandized to view terrorists, what terrorists look like and what acts of terrorism look like. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just, so it's a white... You don't want to gunman. recognize, you don't want to recognize one singular white gunman going inside a church as a terrorist act. But by definition, that's what terrorism is. You know right. what I'm saying? Because terrorism has always been racialized. Always. Right. So if we even are looking at the foundations of like Islamophobia, Islamophobia in this country, or Islamomesia, people say Islamomesia, like for the hatred, phobia mm-hmm. is like a legitimate like fear, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people like disabled folks talk about how, okay, use mesia instead of phobia because phobia is the actual legitimate like, you know, fear, mm-hmm. right? You don't fear, you have hatred. It's hate, right? Um, so just thinking about like just the hatred of Muslim folks and thinking about it specifically in this country, it's like you had black black Muslims were some of the first, mu- were the first Muslims in this country, mm-hmm. right? Taken from Africa, right? And then they had their, re- their religion stolen from them and you know, you have white people enforcing Christianity onto them, right? It's like that's the foundation of like Islam Indonesia in this country of the hatred of Muslims, right? It's rooted also in this idea of anti blackness too. Right. So we can't separate so I don't want black people to be like, Oh, this isn't a black issue. This is there a are, black issue. There are black Muslims. There are black Muslims. Especially here in the right. town, we know that there are black Muslims. For sure. Here in Oakland we know for a fact that black Muslims exist. Yeah. Like we've been like again, we've been propagandized to believe that this is what a Muslim looks like, and mm-hmm. it's, you know, they hardly ever show like niggas that look like us. It's like, bro, you y'all niggas be called Malcolm X, nigga. <laughs> Brother was a fucking Muslim, you feel me? So it's like understanding also the role black Muslims have had in the black liberation movement too is, I think, very important. But I think just looking at the foundation of like Islamophobia, Islamophobia in this country, right? Is looking at it through a like it's rooted in anti-blackness too, right? So we can't just say this. Oh, this doesn't affect us. Nah, this affects us. And it's important, yeah. Like, when we talk about eradicating white supremacy and, like, revolution, do we only want it for black folks? And that's not right. That's not what revolutionary and radical politics are are rooted in. It's like, no, we're trying to alleviate it. We don't want anyone suffering under the systems of oppression. Facts. Like, it's not just, um, you know, uplifting black folks. It's anyone that's suffering at the hands of this white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And black people are the only one, you know what I'm saying? Who experienced the oppression of global white supremacy and colonization, yeah. right? The American empire stretches far, but you know, the sun don't go down in American empire, right? It's always up. So it's like thinking about that is we have to have also have global solidarity with other oppressed people, you feel me? And if we talk about revolution, like do we really think we can just do this shit alone? You gotta think about it. The oppressors are locked in globally. You know what I'm saying? Them, them, they they, they, they are locked way in tapped globally. In. The oppressors Straps, fuck with each other. bombs, AKs, fucking <laughs> so F-18s and shit. If on a global scale, the people that are upholding the system are in cahoots, the folks that are trying to destroy the system and bring it down have to also link up right. and band together. That's the only way. We can't be having... Like, yeah, we, we, we definitely have to... It's going to take global solidarity for us to eradicate a global oppressive system. Right. That's just what it is. And as a revolutionary, if you use the word revolutionary, revolutionary, you gotta understand our problem, our issues here is not just like, we, we coming from Oakland, you feel me? That's where our perspective is coming from. But we also know the issues in Oakland are also very similar to issues in other places in the world because we know how global white supremacy works. Yeah. Right. So it's like looking at it, when we say it's all of us or none of us, bro, it's like for real, it's all of us black people, you feel me? And I think of all black people are free. Like, if we really think about this, if all black people are free, indigenous people on this land are free, nigga, everybody gonna be free. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, people love to romanticize the Panthers, but also they didn't study what the Panthers were doing. You feel me? Like, them niggas was internationalists. They you was know? locked in, bro. They had fucking, you know, chapters in Algeria, you know, Huey going to North, they going to North Korea, Huey going to Palestine, you know. Huey literally offered black Panthers to fight in the fight with the Viet Cong against the United States, right? So, like, what are we trying to build solidarity amongst um, racial lines under, you know, a revolutionary idea and a revolutionary practice, right? So if we're talking about really overthrowing colonization, bro, it's, you know, I believe in, like, black revolutionary organizing, but also, like, we got to build with other people who are 
other races and shit who are still who are on the revolutionary shit too. If we really are all gonna be free and like yeah, save like the if world, we're saying bro, all of us or none of us, then we have to work with all of us. Period. Point blank. We can't just be sitting over here in a in a, a black a, you know like only one to. Cause that's not what revolutionary politics are. That's not what radical politics are. It's not just like okay, we are gonna make sure that the black folks are straight. It's like nah, bro. Like we don't want to see this shit happening anywhere. Yeah. Period. Point blank. Like right. that's that's at least my understanding of mm-hmm. what a radical and revolutionary is. And we coming from a black perspective. This shit's yeah. still hella black. You feel me? And we still we feel like we need to build with black people, right? And we need to address our issues and build our own organizations, but also with our own organizations building solidarity with other organizations. You feel me? I think that's where the Panthers show like a really good model. You feel me? It's like if you look at why Fred Hampton was killed, he was building solidarity amongst Chicago. You feel me? He was building with white poor people, brown folks, you feel me? Like he was really building with all these different folks and like educating people on the conditions that we live in. And that's what made him so dangerous, him building the Rainbow Coalition. You know what I'm saying? It's like even people love the Panthers so much, you know, it's like a lot of I feel like niggas who do not like Queer folks love the Panthers, but don't even realize that Huey Newton was like actively working with the Gay Liberation Front and building solidarity with the Gay Liberation Front. Thanks. Building solidarity with women's movements. And that's back in the 60s. So it's like 2019, bro. It's like niggas is making the same mistakes. Like, ah, uh, we just got to focus on black people. All this immigration isn't a black issue. It's like, bro. <laughs> First of all, there's black immigrants. And if we see seeing brown people locked up in cages, we should be mad at that too, even if we weren't affected by it. And it's like, bro, like, or do you, once you start talking about, if you're, if you're trying to center yourselves or only try to focus on, focus on yourself, that's, that's, yeah, I feel like that's like more of an inclusive way to go about things as, as opposed to revolution. Like, oh no, we need to just get ourselves out of this and try to be like these, you know what I'm saying? Like we want, we want the access that, that these folks got as opposed to breaking it fully all the way down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, yeah, that's, that's not, that's not revolution, revolutionary at all, bro. The fact that if you're a black person and you're not trying to uh, align yourself with, you know, poor white folks that got the right revolution, revolutionary politics, queer folks, uh, folks beyond borders, right? If you're not trying to do that, it's not revolutionary, bro. Period, point blank. Because at the end of the day, you'll put yourself in a better place, but there's still gonna be people out there suffering at the hands yeah. of this white supremacist capitalist society. Right. Period. And people will be all tripping over borders. I'm like, oh, I'm an American. I'm a black American, bro. It's like, first of all, this border is created by the white man. <laughs> anyway, it's a colonial border that you fucking talking about. Facts. So it's like global solidarity is very important in the black liberation movement. If we really want to be free, nigga, we got to build globally. Because, you feel me? We stronger with <laughs> we stronger together. You feel me? We got to build on the continent, too. Build with our people, you feel me, on the continent. Really, and just tapping in with folks like that, you know, out there. Facts. Like, if we talk about really like a pan African revolution, you feel me? We have to really build, you know, because we in America, we, we're in a distinct position where we are landless people on land that ain't ours and we colonized here. You feel me? So it's like we gotta build with other people too, you feel me? I don't think, want nobody think suffering at that shit, bro. Yeah. I don't want nobody suffering at that shit. I know I wouldn't feel right if all the black people were straight. But it's still motherfuckers around the world suffering at the hands of this imperialist nation. Like I'm, I'm not gonna like nah, the job ain't done. The job don't stop at black folks. Right. And Period. Facts. It don't stop there. Yeah. That's a true revolutionary politic in my opinion. And we ain't gonna be free if other people aren't. Like our. <laughs> and, uh, if, if That's just making us like white folks. Yeah. If we out here thriving. You know and what I'm saying? Everybody it's just wouldn't even work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like people think that they have this romantic idea. Of, I feel like nationalism in some ways, like, oh, if all, us black Americans are free and we have our own, you know, businesses, our own shit, this, this, and that. It's like, bro. So, what you want to go? You want to go? We just want to places? You want to go take advantage want, of places? A lot of people just want a black capitalist class. Yeah, like, nah, oh, cool. no. We just want our black this, black this, black that, while other people are suffering. First of all, you, won't be, you won't be free because capitalism is still going to exploit your own people, too. Yeah. Whether it's a black face on it or a white face on it, capitalism is still capitalism, and capitalism will still kill and exploit somebody, even if it's black people at the head of it. So, that's facts, period, point, blank. The revolution must be global. Hello? I think it's okay for us to get into the extended content now. Yeah, let's do it. Honestly, if you want to tap into this extended portion of Hello Black, 
tap in with our Patreon, patreon.com slash hellblackpod. We rocking, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Thank y'all for fucking with us. That was episode 39. 39. Mm-hmm. You know, next episode, episode 40, you feel me? 40 is a big number? I feel like 40 is a big number, I don't know. That's like, for, for it us, is for us. For it us, is, like, bro, it's the thing, like, that's, that's what we gotta do, <laughs> we can determine what's big, <laughs> period, point blank, and we can I'm say, we, that that yeah, we can celebrate our accomplishments, we don't gotta, I feel like, yeah, we don't have to. Do, we don't have to let other folks determine what's important to hell is black. Yeah. Forty that's episodes. Important to us. That's a lot, especially thinking about. Celebrate your shit, bro. Period. And that's what I noticed. When you celebrate shit for yourself, other it, it should make other people around you want to celebrate. If we was like, oh, it's thirty fifth episode, bro. I'm so proud. Of everybody. Yeah. Like, y'all should be proud of <laughs> our listeners. You feel what I'm saying? Like, damn, we've been rocking with these niggas for thirty five episodes. Yeah. So now we're gonna be on episode forty with this next one, and this is a this is a whole celebration for the entire hell of black podcast family. Yeah. I think we might have a special guest on episode 42. Oh, know. yeah. See? So, Boom. there we go. Get ready for episode 40. Make sure you listen to our last episode. You know, Santa Barbara, Black Healing, Black Radicalism. We got a lot of good content. If this is the first episode you listen to, make sure you tap into our previous shit. Because we come with straight fire every single time. I ain't even going to lie to you. So, we're going to tap into this Patreon exclusive. Tap in patreon.com <laughs> slash hellblackpie. <laughs> he be egg that, that nigga, bro. That shit was all <laughs> funny. Somebody just sticked it to me again. Oh, bro, yeah. bro, that bro, that shit is hilarious. See, some man. white people they be knowing the fuck up shit that white people be doing. So one of the uh, senators head, or whatever head. said some really foul shit towards Muslim people after the shit. And this little white boy, well, he probably was like 15, 16 years old. He pulled out his phone. Yeah. He had an egg, and he just smashed this motherfucker on the head. That shit was hilarious. That so. shit was legit hilarious. <laughs> Uh, y'all see y'all getting extended content but now we really tapped out so patreon.com hellblackpile listen to the rest mm. part Yeet.